Good evening, church. Good to see you here tonight and glad you could be here and uh, hope you are excited as we go into uh, the first question of our new series, which is going to be on, well, I wonder. We've talked about encouraging questions and tonight will be the first one we got, which tonight's question will have to do with, what if I do feel anxiety? Am I sinning if I feel anxiety? And it comes because of certain verses like Matthew chapter 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. It says, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And what about Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7? Do not be anxious about anything, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Interesting verses. And it's a worthy question because we don't want to do something that's sinful. And yet we know we live in a troubled world, a broken world, and where it's not uncommon to feel anxiety or anxiousness. I don't know what makes you feel anxious. It's different for a lot of people. I know some people freak out over tests. I've only had one test I was ever nervous over. That's when I moved here. They make you take your driving test over again. And I thought, man, what if I fail? This is so, it would be so embarrassing. And I really, really studied for that test and just waited to see what would happen because I was worried, man, these people, they're going to think I'm an idiot because I can't pass a driving test after all these years of driving. I don't know what makes you anxious. Maybe it's public speaking. Maybe it's encountering someone. Maybe it's dealing with a problem in your family. It depends on the circumstance. But is it sinful? Is it sinful? Well, there's plenty of examples we have in the Bible of people who did face anxiety. I mean, that really went through a lot of anxiousness. In many ways, you could say Jonah would be an example of anxiety and anxiousness because after he spoke his message to the Ninevites and they did repent, it was a moment in which he should have been full of joy. But instead, he had this heaviness come down on him and his turned to anger and it manifested in a way that was not agreeable to the will of God. And in many ways, as we said before, it's kind of an example of how not to be a prophet of God. But his emotional response to the circumstance didn't seem very good. So there's an example of he had the wrong thought. He's had this feeling of anxiousness and building up in him. And it resulted in a bad action in the midst of it. And yet we have other people that feel anxiety in the scriptures as well. David, King David, read through the Psalms. You can't miss it. There's moments where this guy, this great king of Israel, this man after God's own heart was built up with a lot of concern and, and anxiety uh, and moments of fear. He prayed God would direct him through. In Psalm chapter 61, he says, hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been a shelter for me. A strong tower from the enemy. Yeah, David went through it. We even have moments where other characters in the Bible, Martha went through it. In fact, Jesus told her that she was anxious and troubled over many things. But her question is, is it sinful? We've got things where we can kind of try to suss it out a little bit. But when you get down to it, is it sinful? Thankfully, we have this example with Jesus. Now, we know from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, that Jesus was tempted in all points as we were, but he was without sin. He was without sin. And yet we have a moment where Jesus was overwhelmed. It's in the garden. Go with me, if you will, to Luke chapter um, 22. Luke chapter 22. And as I read it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that situation. I do. He's in the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, it's all about to go down, his purpose for coming, his sacrifice is ahead of him. And he knows, he knows what's about to unfold. He knows the hurt that's going to come from the betrayal. He knows the hurt that's going to be coming from the abandonment of those close to him. He knows the physical hurt that's going to come from the beatings and the crown of thorns and the, the lashings. He knows the hurt that's going to come from being nailed to a cross and hung up in shame. He knows the hurt 
of having all of these people who, who he comes to love and to help and to build up, and, and they're going to mock him and reject him and give him a false trial. He knows the hurt of the broken world, and he knows the intensity of that in his human form is coming all in this moment. In reality, the salvation of mankind is going to hang in that moment, so it's not a light thing. And Verse 41 of Luke chapter 22 says, And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and he prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him and being in agony. He prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He wasn't in agony because he's had the beatings yet. He wasn't in agony because he's had the nails put through his hands and feet yet. He hadn't been through any of that. It's the anticipation of what's to come. It's the expectation of this moment that's coming. And all of humanity is resting on him. Fully God and fully man. And here he is in a moment dealing with some very complex emotions. Anxious, anxiety. And heavier than that as well. And yet Jesus is tempted in all ways as we are, but without sin. And so if we have an example where Jesus was dealing with this, then we know that anxiety in and of itself is not a sin. And I hope we take comfort in that. I hope we take comfort in that. But I also hope we take comfort in seeing that what's laid out before us is a way to navigate that. Because as was pointed out with Jonah, and probably true for all of us, it can become sin. Anxiety can become sin if we handle it poorly. And the circumstances that we might create that creates the anxiety might be because of sin. So it could be that our thoughts create the anxiety, and that's a problem we would have to deal with. And it could be that our emotional state because of the anxiety could uh, hit us in such a way that it leads us to a multitude of sin. And so that we need to be very careful about. But thankfully here we have a situation where Jesus is demonstrating one way, one way in a very wise way for us to contend with these circumstances. And Jesus was not shying away from his responsibility and he wasn't running from it. He was facing through it. And that's something that you see for many people that are faithful in the Bible. They don't run from it. They run right through it. But they are leaning on God the entire time. That was the whole point of David's prayer in Psalms. He went straight to God. Now, to be sure, we're talking with very serious and heavy anxiety situations here. But I also want us to understand that we're talking about the most common ones that we experience. I know that it's difficult sometimes and there's anxieties that come because you can't stop it. You don't even know where it comes from and there's a chemical issue to deal with and things. And we're not quite talking about that. And I know there's some that comes from a multitude of trauma and such and they require a special sort of care and it's ongoing. I understand that. But the ones that we experience day to day, there's an answer. At least there's a process. And at least there's an understanding of it doesn't have to be sinful. Could be if we don't handle it in a godly way. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. And the Bible maps out several things that we can choose to control certain aspects of our life. And that's really what a lot of this is. You ever think about how much anxiety comes because of the question, what if? You encounter a circumstance and you're like, well, well, what if it goes really bad? Or what if? These people reject me, or what if they laugh at me, or, or what if people think I, I, I'm just a failure at something, or what if no one will talk to me, or, or what if I can't find a way out? What if just builds and builds and builds and builds, and our focus becomes on that darkness of the what if and all the bad, and really we've made the mistake of taking our focus off exactly where it needs to be. The solutions. What if it goes right? And what if people appreciate you? And what if people include you? And what if, what if we remember that God is always there for us? And what if we lean into his peace and 
What if we remember his love and what if we remember verses where God gave us not the spirit of fear but of power and love and self-control and what if we remember that God said to cast all your anxieties on him for he cares for you. I know it's not so simple as saying just stop feeling that way. That's absurd. But there are things that we can do to address it and that's what I hope we're going to be able to discuss quite freely tonight. I also recognize that some of this could get sort of personal and don't feel like in the discussion groups you have to share anything you don't feel comfortable doing so. But at the same time, you might, you might choose to. You might explain how you have been blessed to navigate through some anxiety because that would be a blessing to someone else. And they may not vocalize it, but someone might need to hear that. And we need to lean on each other for that. God blessed us with the church, and I love our church. We have a great one. And we can be there for each other in that regard. So tonight we're going to talk about anxiety and God. Tonight we're also going to break up in our groups as we normally do. But I want to encourage you, perhaps, just perhaps, you mix it up and you might go to a different group. Now, Alan is going to be teaching in here. And Rodney is going to be teaching in his regular class. Andrew and I are actually going to be switching. So that's going to be a little bit different. But you might actually decide, you know, I've never been in that place upstairs, I'll go upstairs. And you might say, you know, never been down in the auditorium. I'll try that one out for a little bit. That's fine too. And if you feel anxious about that, <laughs> I say lean into the awkward and sit with someone you've never sat with before. But I enjoy that, so you may not, regardless. All right, we'll close out with an invitation. I am thrilled that everyone can be here tonight, and I hope we can be a benefit to one another. But I do want you to be mindful of your, your spiritual relationship with God. It's, it's the most important thing that you can possibly have. And it certainly is the answer for so much of the things that makes us anxious in life. God is present. But God wants you to be spiritually successful. God wants you to have salvation. God wants you to be free from sin. Don't ever, ever forget that. And he gave an answer for that in his son Jesus. Who after this prayer in Luke 22 did go to the cross. He did die to pay for our sins, all of us, all of us. And he did rise again, conquering death, paving the pathway. It's all very real. And tonight, in a very real way, you may have a need, a deep need, to, to confront some separation you have from God or to chase after that desire to be as close to God as you possibly can be. Well, then let tonight be that night. If there's a way that we can serve you, please do not hesitate. Your soul it matters way too much. Tonight, if there's a need where we can lift you up and pray with you and be there for you or spend time in God's word, let's do it. Let's do it. If there's a way that we can serve you, let us know as we stand and as we sing.